What is going on you guys? Theo here with the big review back yet again with another King of Fighters All-Star video and today we are going to be taking a look at some very exciting news as we predicted the other day and mentioned in our video covering the Serena best set announcement. There is a announcement for a Korean live stream that will be taking place next week. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into that, talk about the details on it, and then go into some wild speculation and complete and utter theorizing and theory crafting on what we think is going to be in this February update. But before we get into all that, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe. It helps me out a ton as a new YouTuber. So let's go ahead and get into the details of this live stream first and talk about it. So first and foremost, special thanks to my usual source for data mines and information, Steve and you, for bringing this to my attention as well as predicting that this was going to happen today last week. You the man, buddy, thank you. So when it comes to what we're seeing here, this is going to be the announcement po poster for the live stream, and they are billing this as being the first episode of season two of the live streams. So we should be expecting something pretty cool. Now, we're gonna go into what we expect here momentarily, but all of that is going to be complete and utter theorizing, so don't take any of it as fact. It's just going to be us sitting here with our tinfoil hats on. I've got it ready. It's sitting next to me, and we're gonna talk about all that, but it is going to be on Tuesday, February 23rd at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So. For those of you in other time zones, adjust accordingly. I am using Google Translate, so you're going to notice some pretty goofy stuff with these translations here. One thing of note on that poster is it says to watch the live stream on YouTube. So this is a minor detail, but it might mean that this will not be available on Twitch. There's that possibility, although there's still the possibility that they'll do it the same as normal, which would mean that it would be on Twitch as well. But being that they specifically say to watch it on YouTube, I'm wondering if that will be the case, but we'll have to wait and see. We'll know closer to the date. As far as what they're talking about announcing in this, they're going to be doing two things. So you'll notice down there it's going to say corner one, corner two, which again, Google Translate is uh, it's sus. But when it comes to what that means, it's basically saying there's going to be a Q&A with the developers and then there's going to be a preview of the February update. So. Those are the two main things that they're going to be covering in this live stream. Of course, the biggest question is going to be what is going to be in the February update? And the first thing that I know everybody is going to be thinking about is a collab, and I'm here to tell you guys right now, I would not necessarily expect that. Uh, I'm still of the opinion, I have mentioned this several times in the past few weeks, and saying that I'm expecting a collab in the next month or so. I still think that that is going to be something that is going to happen in March at this point. I don't see the usual kind of signs of a collab that we normally would see the past few weeks. So I'm beginning to wonder if that, I, I think it's going to be March, but I could be wrong. Again, this is at the, this point in the video, we're just speculating, but I, I would not get your hopes too up. But let's go ahead and move over to the English forum, and there's a few things I do want to talk about. So. This here is the fourth developer's handbook that came out at the beginning of February. And this is where we start to get into what we should expect for this announcement on this live stream. And as far as what was covered in here, we've covered this in a previous video, but there were two main points that they talked about in here. There was live PVE, which is going to be the kind of 3v1, you know, you invite a couple of friends, jump in against a boss, and do like a raid style system against a boss with your friends. And then there is going to be the finishing of the 2001 story mode. Other loose ends that they have talked about in the past that were still due for updates on is Epic Quest. So those are the three main things I want to talk about in this video. So, as far as those three things, I think that there is a distinct possibility as far as what we're going to see announced here on this live stream of the 2001 story mode update getting added into the game next week. I think that that is a lock. I think that that is something that is definitely going to happen. Um, it's long overdue. They've already talked about it, as you can see here, and I think that it is something that we're probably going to see. Now, as far as anything else, 
They mention live PvE in here, but I am given pause on predicting that as being what they are going to be dropping next week for one main reason, and that is the fact that they mention in here that they are going to be thoroughly playtesting it, and I know the usual joke is going to come up of, well, it's been a few weeks, that's thoroughly playtesting for Netmarble standards, and, uh, you know, I mean, I can't confirm nor deny such, such allegations, but when it comes to that i i'm cautiously optimistic i'm really still hoping that that ends up being good and they take their time with it i still have my doubts and i've talked about this in the past i actually did a video talking about whether or not i felt like live pve was viable and i just i don't know still i'm still on the fence with that one as much as i would love to see it it would be great to be able to do live streams and be able to do raids with you guys. It'd be great to be able to invite some of my fellow YouTubers that I'm friends with to do this. But it's just, it's one of those things where I just have my doubts considering how not only PvP has looked since its inception, but also things like Team Relay Challenge, which is very similar, it sounds like, in design to this, and that is a hot mess. So I don't know about all that. However, that being said, other things that could potentially be happening here, if we get the new 2001 story mode update, they've been teasing Epic Quest for a while, and we've talked about this as well in the past, and with Epic Quest, we've had data mines forever on different things that could be part of that, including designs and character models for a new Ignis, a new Zero, so on and so forth, that would be bosses for that. And that is still a definite possibility. They've talked about it quite a bit. I would feel like that, because I think going back to the end of December, we got our first word on the new Epic Quest. So I feel like that's due, and that could be a part of this. Now, things that would come along with that that would be exciting would be three PG cards, potentially, for Ignis and Original Zero. So that would be something that would be exciting and would be very well received for those characters by the community. Now, other things that could be going on here, and this is probably as wild as my speculation is going to get in this video, but I think that we have plenty of reason to believe that there is every reason in the world that they would announce a new character or characters on this live stream, especially considering Mian only has about four days left on her countdown before she's gone. I think that there is the possibility that we see a new boss syndrome banner. Now, I have no details to go on on this. I have no leaks. I have no information. This is all just theory crafting, but Steven brought this up himself, and this is something that I feel like is a distinct possibility. If they do focus on 2001 Story Mode as well as Epic Quest with this update, I could definitely see them adding in characters that are nests-based for a boss syndrome banner, which would mean characters potentially like Ignis and Zero, as we've mentioned. So I could definitely see those being potential boss syndrome candidates in general, and even characters like Chrysalid too, you could possibly throw into that pool, but I do think that there is the potential of that happening. I would be very surprised if there was no characters whatsoever touched on in this live stream, considering the fact, like I said, that we are going to be losing Mian on the raid up here in the next few days. And it's been a while since we've had any major character updates, like a new banner or a collab or anything of that nature. And it would make sense, right? Like if you're going to be doing a new epic quest and a new story mode, especially considering the fact that those two things kind of overlap in the sense that we know that there is a high potential chance of seeing characters like Ignis and Zero in the new Epic Quest from the data mines that happened a year ago at this point or better. And the fact that we are going to be getting the finishing up of 2001 story mode. So all of that kind of considered, I do think that there is that possibility. I know that everybody would be very excited for that. I think we've been saving long enough now to where I feel like everybody should be mostly ready unless, you know, you went in on characters like Mian or Elizabeth, which if they're characters that you love, then don't feel bad whatsoever. But I do feel like a lot of people have been saving for a while now, ever since the end of the last Boss Syndrome banner. And this is, I feel like a strong possibility. I, I will say that. 
Again, I have nothing to go on on this. I have no kind of leaks or anything like that, but that that's just my opinion on that. And I felt like it was something worth bringing up because it was, like I said, something that my source also kind of brought up. And this has been something that's been on my mind for a while. We, again, we have still have no idea what the process is with the boss syndrome characters, what the pattern is. There doesn't seem to be one at this point. So if they wanted to go that route, it would make sense, right? So. I'm curious to know what your guys' thoughts are on this as well, so make sure to let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think is going to happen. Are you excited for this Korean live stream? What are your hopes for it? I know a lot of people are going to be kind of hoping for a new collab announcement. Again, that's a possibility, but I'm still a little bit skeptical on that one. So we'll just put that put it out there but it could be it could be that they announce it we'll see we'll have to wait and see we only have a few days to wait and we will know what the details on this february update are but being that it is the first major major update of the year or from the sounds of it at least it's going to be then it should be pretty exciting and at least bring in something that should keep us busy for a while so with all that being said guys Let's go ahead and move on to the next topics in today's video and get into some of the news going on, including some other leaks that have been out for a while from the data that I just have not covered because, well, I just haven't had the time. So let's take a look real quick. All right, you guys, so what you're looking at here, and thank you to the unofficial Discord for King of Fighters All-Star and the wonderful data miners there for bringing this to our attention a few weeks ago. Again, this is something that's been out there for a little bit. I have not seen it kind of outside of the Discord, so I figured I would post it here for you guys to see in case you're not a part of the unofficial Discord. But what you're seeing here is an asset for Athena. Uh, Athena 13 to be exact, this would be one of her finishers that would be added. So you're just seeing an asset for that. So pretty cool stuff. Pretty much confirms that she is not dead and buried, but that's all I wanted to show you there. Just a little bit of information. But we're going to go ahead and move on to the next topic and talk about this Kyo Kusanagi note from Tomohiro Nakata. And we're going to go through this real quick. They do these every week with the new trailer release. It's just kind of some thoughts from the designer on the character. So we'll go ahead and go through this real quick. So Kyo joins this latest KOF looking a lot like his younger self with his parted hair, white bandana, and slick black jacket. Upon closer inspection, some fans may have noticed some new design changes done to his gloves and jacket sleeves. Fortunately, his overall design seems to be a real hit judging by fan reaction during his reveal. I'm sure there are a ton of eyes on Kyo and who's going to team up with him. So be sure to stay up to date on the latest announcements. So that is what Tomohiro Nakata had to say about the Kyo reveal. And he is right. It does seem as though, uh, thankfully, a lot of people are very happy about this reveal. They're very happy with the way Kyo looks. And yeah, I mean, my initial reaction to it was he looked great. I, again, have, and it's funny, anytime you talk anything KOF 15, it is so polarizing, the 3D versus 2D fan base, that you get downvoted immediately if you have anything positive to say. It's, it's hilarious to me. Um, but I, I still, to this day, have no issue whatsoever with eventually embracing 3D graphics. I've said this in the past, I prefer 2D. I will always be Team 2D, but I'm not one of those people that is completely shut off to the idea of a good 3D KOF game. And from, for all intents and purposes, looking at this, it looks good, it looks great, the graphics are beautiful. So it may not be your cup of tea, it may not be your preference, but that doesn't mean it's bad. Um, but yeah, Kyo looks great, and you will notice those different design elements. We kind of looked at those the other day when we saw this. So yeah, I mean, Kyo looks great. It looks like they are teasing who his teammates are going to be, so everybody can start wildly speculating about that one. But let's go ahead and move on to the final bit of news that I want to talk about. And this is just a little thing, but SNK did release this fun little video. It's going to be <laughs> a little chibi Kyo versus a little chibi Ryu from... Uh, match of the Millennium SNK versus Capcom that as we reported yesterday has officially released for the Nintendo Switch eShop. It's 7 dollars 
Eventually, there's probably going to be a physical edition, given the fact that on Twitter they did go out of their way to let people know that there is going to be a compilation released for the Switch in the future. They hashtagged Capcom in that, so there's every chance in the world that we're going to see something there between the two. But we'll know probably more tomorrow at the Summit. But anyway, guys, that's today's video. Like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace. Continue.